is from CBS. CBS News. According to Republican leaders, President Nixon must either resign or face almost sure impeachment in the Senate. I'm Jim Kilpatrick reporting on the CBS Radio Network. Three Republican leaders met late this afternoon with Mr. Nixon, Senators Hugh Scott and Barry Goldwater, and House GOP leader John Rhodes. The three told reporters that they discussed the impeachment situation with President Nixon. Senator Scott said they told Mr. Nixon the situation was very gloomy on Capitol Hill. In the Washington interview, Senator Barry Goldwater was fairly noncommittal, but in an interview with newsmen in his home state, he was more specific. The House is a foregone conclusion to almost unanimously vote impeachment. And in the Senate, after Monday night's uh, disclosure, uh, it's felt by those of us in that body that he might be able to collect 15 votes against impeachment. Senator Barry Goldwater speaking tonight with Arizona newsmen, including Don Andrews of CBS radio affiliate station KOOL in Phoenix. More news after this. Are you an unpublished author? Do you have a book-length manuscript ready or almost ready for publication? Or do you know of anyone else who is an unpublished author? If so, Vantage Press invites you to write to a leading New York publisher for a free illustrated brochure titled To the Author in Search of a Publisher. It explains how you may have your manuscript printed and published in a matter of months. Just write to GPO Box 1414, New York, New York. Whether your subject is fiction, nonfiction, poetry, or even scientific, specialized, or controversial, this 52-page brochure shows you how to arrange for prompt publication. To get your copy, write to GPO Box 1414, New York, New York. That's GPO Box 1414, New York, New York. If this is your first book, you'll find this free brochure especially valuable and informative. Write to GPO Box 1414, New York, New York. GPO Box 1414, New York, New York. Despite all the speculation, the rumors, the urgings, there is still no word from President Nixon himself regarding the final decision. CBS News White House correspondent Dan Rather reports. The president has been warned that he cannot win a Senate vote to remain in office. Such warnings come from virtually every leader in his own party. The president himself has said nothing publicly. He met briefly earlier this evening with Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. He walked in the White House Rose Garden with his elder daughter, Tricia. Then the whole family had dinner together. Several White House aides in positions to know have indicated to CBS News that they expect the president's intentions to be made known tomorrow or, at the very most, within a few days. Belief is widespread on the White House staff that the president will resign. But persons who have seen the president during the day and evening say he led them to believe that he had not reached any decision. According to congressional leaders in both parties, one factor may be whether an arrangement can be worked out that would allow the president, as they put it, to exit gracefully and be assured that he would not be pursued in the courts. Negotiations for such an arrangement are underway. That does not necessarily mean that the president has agreed even to consider such an arrangement if it could be worked out. Some Democratic congressional leaders are known to take the position that no effort should be made to give the president immunity unless he agrees to a statement of culpability. Officially, White House spokesmen tonight, before they went home, said they were standing by previous statements that the president intends to remain in office and face a Senate trial. Dan Rather, CBS News, the White House. President Nixon's lawyer told a federal court today that nine more subpoenaed Watergate conversations apparently were never recorded. The missing tapes include Mr. Nixon's telephone conversation with his former top aides, H.R. Haldeman and John Ehrlichman, at a time when the Watergate cover-up was unraveling. Presidential lawyer James St. Clair says the calls apparently weighed on a telephone which was not wired into the taping system. Republican Representative Orville Hansen of Idaho has become the fifth incumbent member of Congress to lose his seat in a party primary this year. Hansen says uneasiness and anxiety stemming from the national political crisis might have been partially to blame. More CBS News after this. Time Magazine. What's in it for you this week? Cover story. A portrait of Jack Nicholson, the movie star with a killer smile. A past master of the Hollywood site. The actor who scratched and clawed his way to the top. Time tells you the Nicholson story. From $30 a week mail clerk to the man Mike Nichols says will become one of the great film stars of all time. The Nation. 
how the odds on President Nixon's survival in office are shortening. Visits with voters in the home districts of the six Republicans and the Alabama Democrat who voted for impeachment. A study of the loneliness of Richard Nixon in a world that has shrunk almost to himself. The world, the end of the last empire as Portugal prepares to leave Africa. These are just ports that help you view the whole world's week. Or time takes you to Ankara, Athens, Nicosia, as the tragedy in Cyprus continues. To the American Midwest, where the worst drought since 1934 is raising the specter of economic disaster. To European playgrounds, where, with tourism way off, the cry now is... Yankee, come back. It's all in time this week. Kick up a copy today. For time makes everything more interesting, including you. United Press International reports President Nixon, who told Republican congressional leaders Wednesday he was considering resigning, has begun resi work on a resignation statement. Repeating, United Press International says it has learned that President Nixon has started to work on a resignation statement. President Nixon told Republican leaders earlier he was considering resigning, according to UPI. I'm Jim Kilpatrick, CBS News. Tonight's CBS Radio Mystery Theater is brought to you by A.M.A.'s downtown and five suburban stores and by the nine 22-hour McDonald's, one of which is the McDonald's with a fountain at 4987 Transit Road between Sheridan and Maple. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Welcome to the world of, no, no, not your imagination this time, but that of a man, a writer, who had more than enough for both of us. This time, then, I bid you relax, let your imagination take a holiday, as I bring you not only a story of horror, but of wit and brilliance. Oscar Wilde's The Picture of Dorian Gray. But the portrait of you, Dorian... The portrait I painted of you. It is hideous. Dorian, what does this mean? It means that the wish, the frightful wish I made in your studio 18 months ago was granted impossible. The room is damp. Mildew has got into the canvas. The paints I used had some mineral poison in them. I tell you, the thing is impossible. This is the face of... of a monster. Yes, Hallward. The face of a monster. The face of my soul. Our mystery drama, The Picture of Dorian Gray, was especially adapted from the Oscar Wilde classic for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Nick Pryor. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. You've seen the Budweiser commercials on television, and maybe you've wondered how long people have been putting that famous Bud label on things. Well, not as long as the brewers of Bud have been putting things on the label. Things like a list of Bud's most important ingredients. Quote, brewed by our original process from the choicest hops, rice, and best barley malt. And things like the following statement. This is the famous Budweiser beer. We know of no brand produced by any other brewer, which costs so much to brew and age. Our exclusive Beechwood aging produces a taste, a smoothness, and a drinkability you will find in no other beer at any price. Unquote. Yes, brewing beer right does make a difference. Read the Bud label. Taste the king of beers. And you'll agree, when you say Budweiser, you've said it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. Great news from AMAs for everybody with good ideas for home decorating. There's a super redecorate your home sale going on now at AMAs with exciting savings on everything you want and need. Select beautiful quality furniture for living room, dining room, and bedroom. Occasional chairs, sleeping sofas, bookcases, and elegant match sets. Light up your home life with stylish lamps and frame your windows with luxurious draperies, all at amazingly low prices. 
Soften your floors with colorful fake furs, broadlooms, or classic orientals. Give new beauty to old furniture with slip covers. Buy the china, serving pieces, linens, and bedding you like at very special low prices. Make these home redecorating dreams come true at AMA's wonderful home sale. Furniture, bedding, and rugs, not at university. Nothing is new under the sun. Women's lib is as old as the Greeks. And the vaunted liberality of our times, you know, do your own thing. Live today, pay tomorrow. Whatever is pleasurable is right, was more than anticipated by a certain Victorian named Oscar Wilde, who in 1891 wrote the picture of Dorian Gray. Come with me now to the London studio of the celebrated portrait painter, Basil Hallward. A handsome young man, Dorian Gray, is having his portrait painted as he chats with Lord Henry Wotton, a rather dissolute, depraved man about town. Please don't move about so much, Dorian. And don't pay any attention to what Lord Henry says. He has a very bad influence on people. Have you, Lord Henry? A bad influence on people? <laughs> There is no such thing as a good influence, Mr. Gray. All influence is immoral. Oh, why? Because to influence a person is to give him one's own soul. He does not think his own thoughts or burn with his natural passions. Ah, and so when one person influences another, if you were to influence me, for example, your individuality would be to that degree destroyed. Uh, just... Turn your head a little more to the right, Dorian. Well, I doubt if you could influence me very much, Sir Henry. I'm told you're a very wicked man. Wicked? <laughs> I only believe in living my life fully, completely, in giving expression to every thought, reality, to every dream. Most men believe in virtue. I believe in sin. In sin? Dorian, don't move, please. But of course. The only way to get rid of a temptation is to yield to it. A provocative thought, Lord Henry. The truth, nothing more. You, Mr. Gray, you yourself, a fresh youth of 20 summers, you have already had passions that made you afraid, thoughts that filled you with terror, daydreams and sleeping dreams whose mere memory might bring a flush of shame to your cheeks. Uh, perhaps. Take my advice. Live while you're young. Youth is the one thing worth having. Oh, I don't feel that way, Lord Henry. Mm -hmm. Because you are young. Have you, youth? But someday when you're old and wrinkled and ugly, when thought has seared your forehead with its lines and passion branded your lips with its hideous fires, then you will feel it. You will feel it terribly. You talk too much, Harry. And frankly, I don't much care for these thoughts you're putting into Dorian's head. Well, you'll not talk any longer. The portrait is finished. Come and look at it. Oh. Well, Dorian, what is it? Why did you draw back from your portrait? Don't you like it? Uh, I, I, I like it too much. Too much? Well, what do you mean? You have... You have painted me as I am, but as Lord Henry just said, someday I shall be old, wrinkled, ugly. Oh, come, Mr. Gray, don't take me too seriously. Many, many years will pass before you are old. But, but why should it be that way? Why should this portrait keep what I must lose? Oh, if it were only the other way. If the picture could change, and, and I could always be what I am now, I'd... <laughs> I'd sell my soul to the devil if that could be true. Look, oh, there's a portrait. Look out. The portrait's fallen to the floor. God in heaven, Horford, Lord Henry. You don't think the devil heard me, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing as supernatural as all that, Dorian. I've been meaning to fix a cracked leg in that easel for weeks, and it finally broke, that's all. Is the portrait damaged? No, not in the least. Are you, Mr. Gray? I? Damaged? Did you mean what you said about selling your soul to the devil? Uh, I... I'm not sure. <laughs> but you, you never know. If, if, if the portrait could grow old instead of me, I, I... I think I might. I... I really think 
I might. Beg pardon, Mr. Bray. Yes, Parker, what is it? Miss Vane calling, sir. At this hour of the morning? It's not yet ten o'clock. Well, show her in, Parker. Thank you, Parker, but I'm already in. Yes, Miss. Sybil, my darling, this is indeed a surprise. An unpleasant one, Dorian. Oh, my dear, we're engaged to be married. How could seeing you be unpleasant? Well, since you haven't seen me in over a week and have broken two engagements with me, I thought it might be. Oh, no, no not at all. It, it's just that I've, I've been terribly busy. Come now. Don't frown at me like that. Give me a kiss to show you forgive me. Oh, Dorian, you smell of brandy. I, uh, uh, I, I had a drink, yes. So early in the day. Well, I wasn't feeling well. I thought it might make me feel better. Dorian... What's happened? Happened? You've changed. You're not the same man I fell in love with, consented to marry. You haven't been the same since that portrait of you over the fireplace came into this house. Oh, that's a silly thing to say. You're, you're certainly not blaming my portrait for what I do. No, I simply date the change in you from the day it was finished. But there is no change in me. You only imagine... Did I imagine you're not calling on me in a week? Did I imagine you're ignoring my message? And... And the stories that I'm hearing about you. Do I imagine them? What? What stories? Stories. Concerning you and Lord Henry Wotton. Stories so... coarse, so... vile that I... I dare not repeat them. He is anything but wicked, Sybil. He, 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 he lives differently from most others. That's all. He, he, he believes in doing what you want to do, in, in living freely, without constraint. Do you believe in that, too? Uh, I, I, I don't quite know. Dorian, darling, it's one thing to be free, another to be depraved. You think me depraved? I think that you're easily led and that Lord Henry is leading you into a life you'll have reason to regret. Oh, Dorian, don't look at me as if you hated me. I'm only saying these things to you because I love you. I love you deeply, devotedly, passionately. You're so precious to me. So precious, I think I'd die if anything happened to you. Oh, forgive me, Sybil. You're, you're, you, you are just as precious to me, as, as, as precious as life itself. Oh, Dorian, my dear. Oh, sweetheart. Are you free this evening? Can you dine with me? Of course. Then I'll call for you at eight, Charles. Oh, wonderful. I'll spend the entire day looking forward. What? That's odd. What? Your portrait. Odd? What's odd about it? This is only the second time I've seen it, but it, it seemed to me that the, that the first time I saw it, it, it seems that it was a superb likeness. Oh, it you? is. It is. Basil Holwood is one of the most brilliant portrait painters in all of Europe. Yes, yes, no doubt of that, but, but there's something a little wrong with the mouth. <laughs> Darling, there's always something a little wrong with the mouth. <laughs> no, no, be, be serious. Your mouth is gentle and sensitive, almost tender. And the mouth of the portrait... But, don't you see it? it? It has almost a cruel look about it. Nonsense. It must be the light. No, I think it's more no, than that. No, you imagine things. Tonight at eight. Dorian. Oh, Dorian. I knew that was you turning into Bond Street. Oh, hello, Basil. How are you? Let me look at you. Oh, by heaven, you're the handsomest young hellion in all of London. Hellion? There's a good deal of talk going on around about your escapades, Dorian. Yours and Lord Henry. I think it's called sowing one's wild oats, Basil. Nothing more. Well, I'm not sure. You certainly don't look as if you've been leading a dissipated life. Clear eyes, healthy skin. Ah, you delight my painter's eye, Dorian. But, of course, that's why I wanted to do your portrait in the first place. And why I want your permission to exhibit it. Exhibit it? Yes. I, uh, I, I'm afraid I can't. Well, you can't? Let's say I prefer not to. Oh, I see. Well, it's, 
It's yours, of course, and you've every right to do with it as you wish. And I don't wish it to be exhibited. No hard feelings, I hope. Why, no, no, of course not. Uh, Dorian, will you be home later in the day? Yes, why? Well, it needs to be varnished, uh, the portrait. It's more than a month now since I finished it. Time to give it a protective coating. Uh, shall we say four o'clock? Well, shall we? Uh, I'm afraid you've forced me to tell you something I'd uh, I'd rather not reveal to you, Basil. Oh? There isn't any portrait. I destroyed it. What? Oh, you, you don't mean that. I do indeed. You destroyed one of my finest... Why, in heaven's name, man, why? I... I simply didn't care for it, that's all. Well, you liked it well enough the first time you saw it. Very true, but the, the more I looked at it, the, 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 the more I felt it wasn't me. Well, I see that the stories about you are true. I was afraid they might be once I heard you'd become close friends with Harry Wooden. Your friend, too, Basil. Yes, but I'm older than you by 20 years, Dorian, and not easily led, or rather misled. I am not being misled. I'm being taught instructed, if you will, in what real pleasures life can hold if one will only let himself go. Remove it, sir? You heard me, Parker. I want the portrait taken down from over the fireplace and carted off to the attic. Whatever you say, sir, of course. But might I venture to suggest that if you had it placed in a different light... What has a different light to do about it? The light changes a good deal during the day, and the portrait... Seems to change with it. You... You've noticed the change, then? Oh, yes, sir. The changes that take place in the differing light altogether are fascinating, sir. Much as I shall be sorry to deprive you of your entertainment, Parker, have it taken to the attic. I'll do it first thing in the morning, sir. No, damn it! You'll do it now! It would seem that Dorian Gray's wish is coming true that the portrait is beginning to show the ravages of his dissipations, not he. But if that is so, and certainly it seems to be, what price will he be forced to pay before the end is reached? Who sells his soul to the devil deals with a harsh bargainer. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Buick introduces a new concept for you to consider in light of today's concern about miles per gallon. Range. Range is what you get when you multiply the mileage your car gets per gallon by the number of gallons your car's gas tank holds. Range is what you need to get you there and back, especially if you plan to travel even just a little. Range is one of the things that help make the Buick Apollo such a special small car. A small car with range. It comes from coupling the Apollo's economical six-cylinder engine with a standard 21-gallon gas tank. It holds a lot, but it doesn't use a lot. Holds a lot of people, too. There's room for six in Buick Comfort. And the ride is Buick, too. In fact, the only place the Apollo may deviate from your conception of a Buick is in its low price. Look into the Apollo. It's what you'd expect a Buick to be, and a lot more than you'd expect a small car to be. Apollo. It's the Buick of small cars. This is the dawn of a great breakfast. Breakfast at McDonald's with Egg McMuffin. What's an Egg McMuffin? Well, McDonald's takes a fresh egg, grills it in creamery butter, and covers it with a slice of cheese. Then tops that off with a sizzling slice of Canadian bacon and serves it all up on a toasted buttered English muffin. Egg McMuffin. Have it by itself or with orange juice and coffee. Either way, you'll have it at a price that won't jolt you awake. So tomorrow morning, get up and get away to breakfast at McDonald's with Egg McMuffin. We like to say it's a Sunday kind of breakfast you can grab any day of the week. You deserve a break today. So get up and get away to McDonald's. Available at one of the nine 22-hour McDonald's, one of which is at the McDonald's with a fountain on Transit Road between Sheridan and Maple. of youth, even though only 20 years old, 
Young Dorian Gray states that he would be willing to sell his soul to the devil if he could remain young always, while Basil Hallward's portrait of him grows old. Seemingly, the devil has taken him at his word, for as Dorian Gray becomes more depraved and dissolute, the portrait shows the increasing ravages of the life he leads, while he remains the same handsome youth who sat for the picture some months ago. But his fiancée, Sybil Vane, is not fooled. I beg you, as you love me, Dorian, give up this, this sordid life, this life of gutter pleasures. How do you know what kind of life I lead, Sybil? You don't live it with me. Reports of your disgusting escapades, yours and Lord Henry's, are known in every drawing room in London. If you love me, you'll give them up. Ah, but you see, that's the point. I don't love you. Don't say that, Dorian. Even if you mean it only to wound me, to strike back, don't say it. It's of no consequence to me whether I wound you or not. You're, you're not yourself. Not myself. My dear, I am more myself than I've ever been in all my life before. In any case, I'm sufficiently myself to tell you now what, for so-called reasons of decency, I have not told you before. I no longer love you. In fact, Sybil, I'm through with you. Dorian. You loved me. No longer. You gave me your heart. Your very soul. My heart, I take back. As for my soul, it belongs to another, I'm afraid. I can't, I, I can't believe this. You look unchanged. You look as you've always looked. Gentle and tender. Compassionate and kind. But you are not. You're cruel and vicious and ruthlessly selfish. You've become an animal. Be grateful, then, that I'm releasing you from any obligation we may have had. And please, don't be tiresome. Just go now, won't you? I love you. Whom did you say, Parker? Mr. Basil Hallward, sir. Hmm, that's who I thought you said. Well... I'm already late for the opera. Tell him I'm not at home. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Hallward, but Mr. Gray is not... Mr. Hallward, please! You can't go in there! Hallward, how dare you? I must see you. I thought you wished never to see me again. I am not here from choice, Dorian. What did you do to Sybil Vane? I? Nothing. Whatever has been done to Sybil Vane, she did to herself. What do you mean by that nonsense? Simply that I told her I no longer love her and want none of her. Sybil is dead, Dorian. By her own hand. Pity. And now, if you'll excuse me. You... you aren't going to the opera. Why, yes. You have just heard of the death of the woman you loved. The woman who took her own life for love of you. And you can go to the opera. Death my dear Hallward, is a most unpleasant subject. And I live only for pleasure. Good night. Coming. Coming. Why, Mr. Dorian, sir, did you forget your key? Damn it, man. Would I be standing out here in the cold, banging away at the door if I hadn't? Come in, Harry. Sir Henry, uh, let me take your hat and cloak, sir. You may go to bed, Parker. Thank you, sir. Good night. Well, and where shall we go after a brandy or two, Harry? I shall go home, I think. <laughs> but the evening's young. I am not. A brandy or two will revive you. And then we'll be off to where? I'm in the mood for a pipe myself. No opium for me tonight, Dorian. Ah, come along now. We'll go to that little dive down in Wapping by the dock. No, not tonight. But you can't ask me to go alone. I'm not asking you to go at all. Harry, what's come over you? Age, my dear fellow. I get tired these days. I am growing old, Dorian. A life of pleasure does exact payment. Though I must say, you look as if you keep up with your payments easily. I have no complaint. How do you do it? In the last six months since we first met in Hallward's studio, we have indulged ourselves in every form of vice, every variety of sin, giving full vent to our passions. And yet, well, look at me. 
I have aged 20 years in these six months keeping up with you. But you, you're as fresh and healthy and young as ever you were. How do you do it? Shall I show you my secret? Show me? I keep a diary. A rather remarkable diary, Harry. In it is recorded every single action of mine since... since that fatal day. Fatal day? The day we met. I thought you were grateful for our meeting. Why do you say fatal day? Come and read my diary and you'll see. Uh, bring your brandy. <laughs> Stairs, Dorian. Where are you taking me? The attic. You keep your diary in the attic? You'll see. Here we are. Wait a moment while I light a candle. All right, Harry. There. In that corner. I can't see a thing. Too dark. Too many shadows. It's a dark diary, Harry. And it has many shadows. Here. Here. Take this candle. Now, go forward. Good Lord. I thought you'd be shocked, Harry. Shocked? I'm shattered. Where did you get this? This hideous painting? Basil Hallward. Impossible. Basil never painted anything as unholy, ungodly as this. Well, really, he didn't. I did. You? And you? Dorian, I'm tiring quickly of your veiled answers. What is this thing? It is a portrait done by Basil Hallward. It is the portrait of Dorian Gray. Of you? This is the portrait he finished that day? It was. It no longer is. But I don't understand that. What has happened here? <laughs> what indeed? Dorian, tell me. What? I made a wish. In Hallward's studio, you remember? No. I said I would willingly sell my soul to the devil if I could remain forever youthful. No matter what excesses of physical pleasure I indulged in, and only this portrait aged. Yes, now I remember, yes. The devil heard and remembered, even though you did not. This is... it's incredible. So have been the vile delights you revealed to me, Harry. The uh, gutter pleasures, as Sybil termed them. Sybil Green, your fiancée? Yes. She's dead, Harry. Oh, no. Ah, yes. And by her own hand. Suicide? Why? Why? She was such a lovely thing, fresh as a rose, innocent as a new fallen snowflake. You break my heart to tell me this. Why would she have done such a thing? Well, she didn't. I did. You? And again, you. Damn enough of this, I say. What in hell's name are you getting at? I think the truth. What truth? That you were wrong. Tragically wrong. You said that day. That day in Basil's studio. The body sins once and has done with its sin. For action is a mode of purification. Oh, Harry. Harry, how wrong you were. Not wrong. Beaten, whipped, vanquished, conquered by my own vices. And you led me into a life of sin? Led? Who led? You wanted it. I tell you truly that I have never been so appalled by such viciousness as I found in you. You said... That day, you said, the only way to get rid of temptation is to yield to it. But I might have added that the only way to overcome temptation is to fight it. What are you holding there in your hand? I can't see in the candlelight. What? A knife. What are you going to do with it? Kill you. Why? You deserve to die. Or put another way, you don't deserve to live. You will never learn, will you? Life isn't something you deserve. It's a burden you must carry. Then be grateful to me, Harry. I am about to relieve you of your... No! Ah! Mm -hmm. A 
good deed. Well done. Do you not agree, portrait? Speak to me, my likeness. My soul. Have I not done well to rid the world of this creature? Speak. I tell you. Speak. Oh, Lord. What's this? The hands. The hands of the portrait. Bloodied. One with the blood of Harry. With the other? Ah, oh, yes. Sybil. Poor, dear, innocent Sybil. Oh, Lord! I fall on my knees and beg you. Forgive me. Forgive me. I knew not what I did. You, you, you knew. that the pleasure of minutes must be paid for in hours. As you sow, so shall you reap. Is that it? Appears that way. Well, Dorian Gray sowed much seed, and his reaping of the harvest was not yet over, as we'll hear when I return shortly with Act Three. Project Hope is reaching out, bringing hope to more countries around the world this year than ever before. Newest addition to Hope's international programs is Ethiopia, where Project Hope's doctors, nurses, and other medical specialists will be working side by side with Ethiopians, teaching while they treat. Since 1960, Hope has trained more than 7,000 physicians, dentists, nurses, and other health care personnel has helped establish new schools of nursing, dentistry, and physical therapy in several countries and assisted in the development of hospitals, teaching institutions, and public health services. Hope's work has been heralded by heads of many nations. Its services requested by many, many more. Hope is training and sharing. Hope is treating and caring. Health is what Hope's all about. Help Project Hope reach out. Help Hope reach out. Right, Project Hope, Room A, Washington, D.C. Sometimes a gentle rain in one place adds up to a raging torrent in another. A torrent that can uproot lives as well as trees. To remedy the things that can be remedied in a disaster... America has a unique emergency force, the American Red Cross, America's good neighbor. Red Cross is on call 24 hours a day, every day, to cope with emergencies, whether they're on the next block or a continent away. Most of the help that's given is from volunteers. The money's from volunteers, too. Volunteers like you. If you need help, join us. If you can give help, Join us. The American Red Cross. Help us help people. Just like you. The mills of the gods grind slowly. But they grind exceeding fine. As they did and were yet to do for Dorian Gray. See him as he sits now, near three in the morning, in the library of his London house. A youth uncommonly handsome, not a line in his attractive face. The personification of young innocence. Yet in the attic above stands the portrait of, not him, but his soul. A soul made hideous by unmentionable sins. Oh, Basil, I'm grateful to you for coming. I, I, I cannot tell you how grateful. You should be. Candidly, I don't know why I came. But the message you sent with Parker... Well, 
shall I be inhuman not to answer such a plea, even from the likes of you? Sit down. Let me give you a brandy. No. Now tell me what you want of me and be quick about it. Oh, I need your help. I am desperate. So I gathered from your message. Will you help me? I should not be here at three in the morning otherwise. Yes, I'll help you if I can. Though you don't deserve it. I'll do it for the friendship we once had. Well, I... I went to the opera tonight with Sir Henry. You forget I brought you the news of Sybil Vane's death. Oh, yes, yes, and you were scandalized, justifiably so, that, that I should still attend the opera. On our return here, Harry and I quarreled. And Basil, I killed him. Dorian. I stabbed him to death. At this moment, his body lies upstairs in the attic. The attic? It was there. I killed him in, 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 in a sudden fit of rage. What in the world were you doing in the attic? I had taken him there to show him my portrait. What portrait? The one you did of me. The one I... But, Dorian, you told me you destroyed it. I lied. I, I, I didn't want you to exhibit it. You, you couldn't have in any case, but I, I... I didn't even want you to see it. Why in heaven's name not? You will see when we go up. You want me to go up there? Basil, you... you, you must get rid of the body for me. What? Are you mad? It would involve me in a murder. A murder for which you bear as much responsibility as I... Responsibility? I bear as much as... You painted the portrait. You introduced me to Sir Henry. Had it not been for either, I I, I should not be in this frightful situation. Nonsense. You can't blame me for what you... Help yourself... me. I beg you. I tell you no. Get someone else. Anyone. Or do it yourself. I can't. I dare not touch the body. I dare not even go near it. It revolts me. If, I say if, I were to consent to this, how am I to get rid of the body? You came in your carriage, did you not? Yes. All right. All right, you have only to carry the body down from the attic, put it in your carriage, drive to the river, and dump it in. What if I am seen? Well, you must take care not to be. Basil, please, for the friendship you once bore me, for the responsibility you do bear in all this, whether you agree or not, please. Well, I can at least go up with you and, and see what may be done. Thank you, Basil, thank you. I'll, I'll take the candelabra. Follow me. There. Whatever Harry may have been, he was my friend. But I cannot help but say, the world is well rid of him. As it will be of me. I'll not deny it. No. Where is the portrait? Oh, you don't want to see that. Dorian, if you wish me to help you get rid of Harry's body, then you'll have to let me see the portrait. It's that or nothing. Very well. It's there, in the corner. Here, take the candelabra. Oh, thank you. You see? Oh, but this is horrible. Hideous. I never painted this. No, I did. No, it can't be. The room is damp. Mildew has got into the canvas. That would account for the... The green splotches on the cheeks. The paints I used had some mineral poison in them. Hence the cancerous growths on the nose. The forehead. Oh, heaven help me. This is the face of a... Of a monster. Yes, Basil. The face of a monster. If this... The if face this of you, my soul. If this... If this is what you are, truly are... It is. I am. And I have nothing to do with you. Oh, you're not human. You're a devil. A fiend. Oh, let me out of here. Wait. You said you'd help. I must get out of here. I must leave this hellhole you call a hole. Basil. No, come back. Help me, Basil. You must help me. <laughs> help me. Someone help me. Oh, help me. Me. 
Yes, come. What now, Parker? You have visitors, sir. Who? A Miss Catherine Wilson from British Charities. Oh, yes. Yes, show, show her in. Uh, uh, Parker? Sir? You, you conveyed my order to the other servants? About the attic, oh, yes. No one will enter the attic, sir, without your permission. Not even you? Not even I, sir. Show Miss Wilson in. You come this way, Miss Wilson. Miss Catherine Wilson. Good of you to come, Miss Wilson. Won't you sit down? Thank you, Mr. Gray. May I say it's good of you to wish to contribute so handsome a sum to our charity. Yes, t- t- tell me about your charity. How, how will the money I give you be spent? Oh, in many ways. To help poor children, orphans, widows in need of assistance. Young people who Young not... people? Well, yes. Young men, young women. Many of whom need help in all sorts of ways. Why do you look at me like that? What... What did you say your name is? Catherine Wilson. Why do you ask? You... You look... You look very much like a young woman I... I was engaged to marry once. It's strange. You... You didn't look like her when you came in, but now you... You seem to be changing before my very eyes. No, Mr. Gray. I am me. No. No, you're not. You... You're Sybil Vane. Mr. Gray. You're Sybil. Only you can't be because you're dead. Dead. You are dead, aren't you? Please, Mr. Gray, take your hands off me. What's come over you, sir? You're you're not dead. You are here. It it is you. Ah, Sybil. Sybil, my darling. Mr. Gray. No, don't pull away. Let me hold you, embrace you, love you as I once. Oh. Oh, good Lord. Oh. What am I doing? You're. You're not Sybil Vane. Mr. Gray, I'm. I'm afraid you're. Ill, not yourself. I'll, I shall come back some no. other day. I, no. Good day, Mr. Gray. What happened to me? What is happening to me? Sir? Are you all right? The young lady said she thought you were ill. I, I confess I, I, I don't feel altogether well. Some brandy, sir? Yes. Please, Harry. Big pardon, sir. What? Why, I, I think you called me Harry. Oh, how sir. could I possibly have called you Harry? Harry's dead. Sir, Henry dead, sir. What? What? <laughs> sir, you are ill. No, 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 no. Don't try to get up, sir. Sit right there. I'll fetch the brandy. Yes. Yes, do that. <laughs> You'll forgive my saying so, sir, but to judge from Sir Henry's high spirits when you return from the opera... Last night, he has many years yet to live in hell. Sir, you are saying the strangest things. Here, here, drink this. Oh, thank you, Harry. Sir, it's Parker, your manservant. The best servant a man ever had. A devoted man, more friend than servant. Better friend than any of them. Better friend than you are, Harry. You swine, sir. Get out, Harry. Damn you. Get out! Mr. Dorian, sir. What? What, Parker? Sir, I'm going to fetch the doctor. Doctor? (laughs) No doctor can help me, Parker. Permit me to differ, sir. I I shall fetch him at once. Parker, sir. It's 11 o'clock. I thought I'd just look in on you before retiring. How do you feel, sir? Not well. I can't sleep. The powders the doctor prescribed, they they don't help. They've made me worse, if anything. Filled my head with all sorts of fearful thoughts, Parker. 
nightmarish thoughts of death, decay. Uh, uh, <laughs> what have I done? Oh, what have I done? Oh, yeah, no, Mr. Dorian, don't take on so. <laughs> Why, for a man like you to have thoughts of death, that's so ridiculous, sir. Look at you, so young, so handsome, so full of spirit. I am old and ugly and decayed. Oh. Yes, sir, if you could see yourself in the glass, but never mind now. Here, let me pull the quilt up around your shoulders, and then you'll sleep. Uh, one thing more. Who was that at the front door earlier tonight? Oh, uh, nothing important, sir. It was a message from Mr. Hallward's housekeeper, sir. Basil's housekeeper? Why would she send a message? Well, uh, she thought you'd want to know since you were one of his closest friends. Were? Oh, I'm sorry to tell you he's dead, sir. How? He took his own life, sir. Oh. Oh. Oh, sir. Sir, oh. I, I shouldn't have told you. Oh, no. I'll no. fetch the doctor. No, no. Sir, you need help. Yes. Yes, and you can help me, partner. Anything, sir, anything. Help me. Help me to the attic. The attic? I feel too weak to go alone. Nor do I dare go alone. And there is something I must do. Help me, good friend. Please help me. Careful, careful. Let me get an arm around you. The candle, yeah. The candle. Can you manage? Easily. Let us go, then. What is it you wish to do? I shall... I shall need a knife. I'll go down and fetch it. No. No need. No need. Shine that candle over there. Yes, sir. <gasps> Mr. Torian, that... That looks like a body. A dead body. It is. It is. Sir Henry's body. Sir Henry? I... Murdered him last night with a knife. It is in his back. Take it out and bring it to me. Oh, sir. You said you would help me. Yes, yes, and I shall. A knife, sir. And now, the portrait. Mr. Hallward's painting of you, the one we brought up here months ago. It is still there, in the corner. Amidst the shadows. I must destroy it. Oh, no, sir. Bring the candle. Sir, I don't know what this is all about. Sir Henry murdered, destroying your portrait. One of the most beautiful paintings that ever... Oh, no. Yes. Now you see why it must be destroyed. It will be destroyed by me. To hell with you, and there, burn in the nethermost fires of the pit, suffer, suffer every torture and torment the devil can heap upon you for the purification of your soul. Oh, Mr. Dorian, uh, Mr. Dorian, uh, the portrait. Look at the portrait. <laughs> Changing. Heaven protect us, it's changing before my very eyes. That, that hideous monster is becoming young and handsome and, and the beautiful. It's you, sir. You, as Mr. Hallward painted you. Yeah, let me hold you up so you can look for. Oh, oh. you. You are becoming. Yes, withered, scabrous. Loathsome, I have become what I really am. The true picture of Dorian Gray. <laughs> and so died Dorian Gray. Turn 
emerging physically into the hideous and loathsome thing which was his soul. As the portrait became once again the handsome youth he once had been. As I read the picture of Dorian Gray, I couldn't help but wonder if our modern penchant for doing your own thing might not be leading some of us, at least, to the same end as poor Dorian. I don't know. What do you think? I'll be back shortly. Who knows how to help you solve your shopping problems? Your Better Business Bureau knows. I saw this perfectly darling mirror in the showroom, so I bought it. But when the truck came, they delivered this thing I never saw before. Now what am I going to do? I'll tell you what to do, madam. But who are you? I'm the man from the Better Business Bureau. Now, the first thing to do is to call the store manager and tell him what happened. But in the future, when your merchandise is delivered, you should examine the item before the delivery truck leaves. And if it's to be delivered from a warehouse, have a clear understanding with the dealer that unless it is the same as the sample shown to you, you will not accept it or pay for it. Oh, thank you. Just part of my job, madam, to help people with their shopping problems. Oscar Wilde poured into the picture of Dorian Gray all his brilliant wit and all his wisdom, too. The wisdom of experience. For Wilde lived life to the hilt and paid for it, as must we all. Our cast included Nick Pryor, Norman Rose, and Roger DeCoven. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now... A preview of our next tale. Unlatch that belt, pale face, or I'll use it to make your other end red. Better get on your horse. Bye, Ma. I love you. <laughs> I love you too, Billy boy. And I also could kill your Uncle Ralph for this stupid birthday present. Guns. What place do they have in our life? Or anyone's? Why does the back doorbell always ring when you're at the front? Coming! All right, all right. What's so important? Yes? Hello, wife. Long time no see. Who are you? What do you... Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Tonight's Mystery Theater has been brought to you by AM&A's downtown and five suburban stores and by the nine 22-hour McDonald's, one of which is the McDonald's with a fountain at 4987 Transit Road between Sheridan and Maple. Now WBEN Buffalo, broadcasting at 930 kilohertz, begins another day of service to the Niagara frontier. Our studio to transmitter link, WEF 90, operates at 949 megahertz.